Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's presentation on Real Glass for Under 5K, Aspen's Evolution E5 Electronic Flight Instrument. For those of you joining us for the first time, my name is Jeff Simon. I'm president of Social Flight. Social Flight is the free web and mobile app dedicated to supporting general aviation. Visit socialflight.com or download the free Social Flight mobile app for Apple and Android devices. You'll have access to over 10,000 aviation events and destinations, including pancake breakfasts, air shows, FA seminars, and now we even have thousands of $100 airport restaurants. You'll even get a weekly email from Social Flight with a list of all the aviation events happening in your local area. Now, in addition to events you can fly to, we also have online events, which is why we are all here today. I have flown for years behind Aspen's Evolution displays. It's my personal philosophy that all the equipment in my aircraft should be the best of breed products for every function in the panel. And Aspen has really lived up to that. That means I want to be able to choose products for each different function directly in front of me, navigation, ADSB, and be able to grow and adapt over time. And to my knowledge, other than just patches and other things that some companies have doing, Aspen is really the only company that has offered something as they've done right now with their Max upgrade, where you can have bought years ago and have this product and be able to completely upgrade it. They're sticking with you. And I'll tell you, I'm on the list to have my Max upgraded as well. So we all know that our aircraft lasts a long time and we really want our avionics to do the same. And so I can honestly say that Aspen has not just been a great partner for us here, but uh, it's really been a perfect fit for my aircraft and my panel, and I'm really looking forward to that max upgrade. Now, before we get started, a few tips. Uh, we will have a recording of tonight's presentation available, and there are QAs that we will have a session at the end with questions. So we certainly have two experts here tonight with Scott Smith, Director of Sales for Aspen Avionics, and Mike Studley, Director of Customer Service and Field Service Engineering. We'll begin with Scott, and then Mike will join us for the QA portion at the end of the presentation. So with that, I'll hand it over to Scott. Welcome, Scott. All right. Thank you. Appreciate you having us, and appreciate everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, we do appreciate your time. We value that. And um, uh, uh, like I said, just appreciate you for joining us. So. Uh, like you said, my name is Scott Smith. I've been with Aspen now going on 12 years. I've uh, been flying behind the product uh, since 2007. Uh, I've got several thousand hours uh, north of uh, 4,000 hours flying the Aspen product line. So when I'm coming to you and I'm talking to you, it's actually from personal experience of living behind the product. Um, and, and we've been very blessed in, in our organization, our business, uh, from folks just like you who have uh, bought our products, been using our products, and we uh, we certainly do appreciate that and we value that. Um, also, Mike Studley, he's been in the industry uh, for 20 years, uh, and he is our director of support, and he will be uh, answering questions at the end. He has a large volume of knowledge uh, within all aspects of our product line, um, so a um, good good person to have on the call as well. So uh, let's let's start it off with a video here that kind of outlines the E5, and we'll go through that and then uh, continue on with the presentation. And there you have it, folks. The uh, our brand new E5 electronic flight instrument. And so what's really exciting about the E5 is it is a primary attitude indicator. So no backup attitude indicator required, which means that you can pull out your vacuum system and clean up the uh, the panel, get rid of your uh, DG or HSI, pull that weight out, uh, gain a little bit of horsepower, um, and it's also IFR certified. This is a huge deal. Most, most folks don't realize that, um, but it is an IFR uh, certified uh, electronic flight instrument. And it's compatible with most navs out there. So let's say you had an, an older KX-170B um, all the way up to the brand new digital navigators. We will interface with all of those through the E5. It requires no instrument panel modification. What does that mean? It just means we don't have to cut into your panel in order to do the install. So it, it literally will fit if you have a standard T configuration or six-pack configuration in your panel. It literally fits in the existing holes. 
and we have a mounting bracket that goes on the outside of, uh, of your uh, panel, and this just uh, slips right in. So you don't have to cut up the panel in order to do the install, which saves on the labor. Uh, there is an option to do a flush mount, however, if you want to do that. We do offer that as well, which flush mounts the unit, and you can uh, discuss that with your local avionics shop. Uh, the new uh, backup battery, the technology in there, gives you up to two hours of battery life. So we've increased from 30 minutes up to two hours with the new technology and the new, uh, new build. It's upgradable, and this is another huge uh, key feature is that you can upgrade to the EFD-1000 Pro Max and all the way up to the Pro Max Plus. And it's just the price difference. And I'll show you another slide here in a second that kind of lays that out. Um, there's no sending the unit back in for uh, upgrade. There's no exchanges. Literally, we can do that in the field. It will also drive a King or Sentry autopilot. So let's say you have a KI-256 attitude indicator, you have a Sentry attitude indicator, and you want to be able to pull that out and replace it with the E5. Well, you can do that and with using the EA-100. We call it an EA-100. It's an uh, adapter box that allows our AHARs to drive the attitude portion of your autopilot. And that's for the, both the King and Sentry attitude indicators. If you have a rate-based autopilot like the S-Tech, then you don't need the EA-100 in order to remove your attitude indicator. We also uh, re will require what we call an ACU or analog converter unit. And I'm gonna go over that in a little bit more uh, detail here in a second. But for $49.95 as an intro price with the E5, you can do all of these things uh, in including pulling out your vacuum system, pulling out your attitude, and you clean up your panel um, if you don't have an autopilot. If you have an autopilot, it's going to be $59.95 for, uh, for the interface, and then it's another, um, if, if you have the need to pull out a Sentry attitude indicator or a uh, King attitude indicator, it's going to be an additional $3,000. Let's go next slide. So what do we got to keep for backups with the E5? Because you do have to keep some backups. That would be an altimeter, airspeed indicator, and turn coordinator. Now we have the question, if I keep my attitude indicator, do I also have to keep a turn coordinator? And the answer to that is no. You can either have the turn coordinator or the attitude indicator as the backup. A pound amount of GPS is required. It, and it will drive your autopilot, like I was mentioning, with the a, uh, ACU. Now, what the ACU gives you are analog converter unit. That's required for all autopilots, including your STEX, your Sentries, your Cessnas, your uh, Kings. All, all autopilots require, uh, interface requires the ACU. Now, what the ACU does is it gives you course, GPSS, heading, and glide slope and localizer outputs to the autopilot. Can you remove your Century King Attitude Indicator? Like I said, yes, you can, but it requires that optional EA-100. And that's another $3,000 for, uh, for the EA-100. And but what that box does, it allows us to digitally drive the attitude portion of those autopods, which is pretty slick. And if, you, uh, if you're familiar with a repair or an overhaul on your King Attitude Indicator, like a KI-256, by the time you send it out, get it back, reinstall it you're you're normally pushing that three thousand dollar more anyway and with the ea100 you get a, a two-year warranty along along with the uh with the purchase ifr capable yes it is like i said before it's ifr certified it has a glide slope and localizer built into it we're going to go over that here in a second and like i said the attitude indicator is not required and it upgrades uh, it gives you a path to upgrade to the Pro Max, and the Pro Max is required if you want to install software enablements like angle of attack, synthetic vision, ADSB unlock, uh, those types of enablements. So drop-in replacement. Here's what I'm talking about. When I said no panel surgery required. You can see where the existing attitude indicator was and the uh, HSI or DG. So this 
uh, slides right in there. And notice where we keep the, uh, the glide slope and the localizer marked in the top part of the display or right around your attitude indicator. So uh, for, for shooting approaches, it's a very powerful uh, tool you've got in front of you. If, you. if you imagine drawing a line there across the bottom, uh, or the, I should say the top part of your uh, a compass right below basically the north symbol, if you drew a line right there and imagine yourself just looking from right there up, everything you need is in the top part of the display for the from the final approach fix to the missed approach point. You've got airspeed on the left hand side, you've got your attitude indicator in the middle, which we give you a line every two and a half degrees instead of every five, which makes it very precise. We have glide slope over there between your attitude indicator and your altimeter, and then your altimeter tape. Right below that is the localizer. So you got left, right, up and down, and then of course, right below that is your heading for your compass and your green course arrow. And then there's there's a uh, a diamond right on top of uh, right above the north symbol there, right by the heading bug, and that is your track. What you're tracking across the ground. So if I'm hand flying the aircraft, I can push that track bug on top of the green course arrow. And it's going to keep desired track and track right together. So I'm not having to look around for all this information. It's all right in front of me. And notice it says my course uh, just to the left of the heading. It says 360. There's the heading. And then just to the left of that is course CRS. So it automatically puts in course for me when I have uh, when I'm have an interface to a GPS navigator. And the uh, the heading bug. What, where it's set to is on the right hand side of that. It says heading 360. So you've got all that information for uh, right in front of you when you're shooting approaches. Now for point A to point B navigation, um, you'll look down at the uh, just the compass itself. You've got your green course arrow, and then at at the bottom of the compass, you've got your CDI needle for left and right deflection. So if I'm traveling from point A to point B to point C, whatever it is I'm doing. I get left and right right there. I get the auto course on, on, the, uh, on top of my compass. So there was a, some confusion out there. It says, well, so there's no, it, the E5 doesn't have an HSI, and that's not true. It has a, a non-traditional HSI because it's giving the exact same information as you've been flying behind with your, with your traditional HSI. The only difference is we've moved the CDI needle down to the bottom of the uh, compass, which actually makes it easier to decipher. You've literally got left and right right there at a simple glance and you can see if you're left or right of course. And then having your course needle up there with the track bug gives you an idea exactly if you're left or right or on course. And uh, we we uh, have uh, GPSS built in there as well as uh, the barrel there on that side. So on this slide we're uh, comparing the E5 to the G5, and there's uh, a, a couple of features here that I want to mention as, as we're looking through them. A uh, big one is the dedicated GPSS button. Now, if you're familiar with GPSS, I call it George Pilot Super Stud because GPSS literally takes information directly from the navigator, and we feed it to the uh, autopilot. And so the autopilot, you leave the autopilot in heading mode. It, the autopilot thinks it's in heading but we're sending GPSS information to the autopilot through the Aspen, and that is actually built in uh, to the Aspen itself. We have an airspeed bug. We, uh, on the nav source select, you can, this is really a nice feature. So you can put in um, your brand new digital navigator, whether it's a new Avidon, new Garmin, um, whatever, or or even down to the old uh, 250XLs, Garmin 250XLs, the old, uh, uh, Apollo navigators, uh, KLN 90Bs, A9Bs, all all of those uh, old navigators uh, we can interface with, and then we can also interface to the older navs. So if you have, like I said, the KX170B, KX155s, uh, older nav systems, with the uh, that'll all display on the E5. So imagine yourself—you've you, just purchased the new Garmin uh, 375. 
the new uh, navigator they just announced. Um, but you still need a nav, right? You got to have a nav, um, and we can be that indicator for your existing nav that you already have in there, your KX155 or your 170B or whatever it is you have. So we can display both the 375 and get all your loss approaches and your navigation and your GPS roll steering. And we also have the ability to display glide slope and localizer and VOR information off of that nav on the E5. The E100, um, the support off of that, we were, we're we, you know, I mentioned the A100 being able to replace your KI-256, your King and Century Attitude Indicators. It does have a little larger screen than the uh, than the G5. Um, actually, the G5's compass rows will fit inside of our compass rows. So we've got a larger screen with larger fonts. Um, and also, our uh, our hardware is uh, is based on on an on a uh, you know TSO product um, comes from a pedigree of a product line that we've got over 15,000 systems out there flying around. So we've been doing this for a while, and we're pretty proud of our product. Uh, and we we give you a really high quality system here with the E5 because it does come off of of the uh, uh, existing uh, pedigree. The battery life, uh, like I said, we give you two hours. Uh, of use on the uh, of the battery life, and uh, we have an arc mode option, which is pretty slick. You can uh, you can actually push the uh, there's a there's a soft key on the right hand side of the screen that allows you to quickly switch between arc mode, which gives you a nice big 135 degree arc over the 360 mode, and um, and of course it does have the metal housing, which is nice. It's a metal housing bezel and uh, you know heavy heavy heavily uh, Heavy duty made there. So as far, far as autopilot integration, I kind of hit on this a little bit earlier, but uh, what's really nice is compatible with most legacy autopilots when installed with the ACU, and that includes the Sentry, King, Stec, Cessna, uh, all those autopilots, which which covers most GA aircraft. Uh, and one thing to note, that, uh, if you need the A100 for the Century or the King Autopilot, it is not available for over-the-counter sales. The, uh, the E5 is, however. You can purchase the E5 and have it shipped right to your house if you want. So we got some exciting news from TrueTrack recently. Uh, they they just announced to us that they have uh, they are submitting to the FAA, and we should have this interface before Oshkosh of 2019. So the interface is going to include heading, Barrow pass through, and GPSS pass through. Now, what does that mean? Well, the TrueTrack Autopilot um, uses Track for heading right now. Uh, what the E5 is going to give it is an actual true heading. To drive the heading portion of that autopilot. The barrow side, if you set the barrow on the Aspen, it's going to pass through or set it automatically on the True Track autopilot. And the same goes for GPSS. When you push GPSS on the Aspen, it's going to engage it on the True Track autopilot. So we're excited about that interface. We think that's going to be a very powerful system. And with an autopilot with the capability that True Track gives you, for five thousand dollars is unheard of in the market until now, and and including you know it's an all digital autopilot includes uh, all your envelope protection for overspeed, underspeed protection won't let you overbank the aircraft. It actually pushes back on on the uh, controls. It has a glide slope coupling and altitude pre-select, so it's a very powerful autopilot for for the price. And it, and when you look at it couple combined with the Aspen E5, your list price is less than $10,000. So we're very excited about this combination. I mentioned upgradability before. Here's a nice flow chart that explains how that works. So what's nice about the Aspen Avionics is you can start off, you can break up your, your investment, if you will. You can start off with an E5 for $49.95, and then you can upgrade that to the Pro Max 
for the, just the price difference. We don't charge a premium. We just we just charge the price difference. So it doesn't cost you any more to start off with an E5 and upgrade to the Pro later. It's the $5,000 difference. And then if you want a Pro Plus Max, which includes AOA and synthetic vision, it's an additional $3,490. So it makes it very simple and easy in the field to do your upgrade through Aspen. And we can also add, uh, once you get to a Pro, you can add an MFD-1000. And with an MFD-1000, that is, uh, will allow you to remove all your required backup instruments. So imagine you had a, a 1000 Pro and a 1000 MFD with the external battery. You, that would give you the ability to recut your panel and just have those two instruments and completely clean up your panel. So we're very excited to bring bring these products to market. So that completes the uh, presentation. I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Mike and Jeff uh, come on here, and, and we uh, certainly appreciate you joining us. Um, thank you for your time, and Jeff, if you want to Go ahead and step in and, and go through some questions that we got. Absolutely. Thanks, Scott. And I'm actually going to back up a slide here so that while we're talking to our questions, we can visualize these systems. Uh, and, and again, uh, we'll uh, we'll do our best to, to handle some of the questions that came in. And then uh, we'll go back and there's a slide you can go directly to Aspen's website and uh, be able to submit further questions. Reach out to them and get all of your questions answered directly. So, uh, Mike, thanks for joining us. Appreciate having sure. an expert on the line to help us. Um, a few questions that have come in. Now, uh, just to clarify, when we talk about uh, uh, what is uh, TSO, and this slide actually shows it. So basically, the E5 is non-TSO. The other equipment is TSO. But of course, it's based on the same hardware, correct? That's correct, Jeff. Excellent. And and you know one of the advantages now with the new generation of avionics coming out here is the ability for an AMP to be able to you know do it, if, especially if it's hard for you to book time at your local avionics shop. And so if you wanted to get started, is it just the E5 that is available over the counter, and then an AMP can do the installation? Yes, that's right, just the E5. Okay, and then as I understand it, if you have to do autopilot integration involving the uh, uh, AC see the analog uh, inputs or the EA100 at that point you really need an avionics shop. That's right. There's so many specialized tools and training that you'd need for autopilot work. It's always best to do that. Okay. Can you clarify for us? So, you know, a lot of people are interested in getting rid of that old vacuum or pressure system in their aircraft. And so if you're starting, if, if you've got E5, first of all, what what do you need to, to have in addition in your panel to pull that system? So the E5 would go in place of the attitude indicator in your DG or HSI, and then you'd leave the remaining four instruments, your altimeter, your airspeed, your turn coordinator. VSI is optional, but it's there. You might as well leave it, uh, but it, you could be removed if you need the space for something else. Okay, so really you don't need another another backup. If you, you put the E5 in and you keep your turn coordinator, you keep your altimeter and VSI and airspeed indicator, that's it. Exactly. Okay, that's great. And then if you do want to go straight to just having a couple things that Scott mentioned earlier, just a couple of pieces of glass in the panel, at that point you're going up to like the Pro Max and, and do the MFD also so you have reversionary uh, um, coverage. That's right. If you go to what we call the 2000 Max system, it has backup capability on the MFD. So with those two screens installed, that's all, that's all you'd need. You would not have any backup instruments external to the displays. Okay. And what about the rest of the hardware? So you've got a remote sensing module, the RSM, that goes outside, gives you outside air temperature, and gives you this other the other information that we've got here. Um, is the hardware basically the same? Or is the upgrade path that we're looking at right here? Uh, tell me what what amount of this is hardware versus software? So the displays are all built on the same hardware, uh, the, all three that you see here. Um, it's really software changes between the three here. Uh, the RSM, that it's, which is your heading sensor, the ACU, 
um, the EA100 if it's installed, those are all compatible across this whole line. So the only change you'd need to make would be to the display itself. Really? So basically, you get in at forty nine ninety five, you get yourself started, and then if you decide later on you want to do anything, you haven't lost any ground in terms of tearing into the panel or the tail of the aircraft. Exactly. Okay, excellent. And then when we talk about autopilots, um, so which can you review which types of autopilots, whether it's KFC uh, 150s or others, uh, just kind of a short list of what autopilots integrate with just the ACU versus what kind of what autopilots mean that you got to have the EA100? So any uh, analog autopilot, so the, the traditional autopilots that we see out there today, the, the Bendix King, the Cessna, the Century or Piper, uh, and the STEC, those all would use the ACU. And then to add the EA100, that's typically done with the, um, the Century slash Piper, which are essentially the same equipment, and the Bendix King. Okay. And uh, magnetometer, that's all built in? Everything's part of the same hardware that gets put in? Yes, the magnetometer is built into the RSM, the remote sensor. Okay. And when we talk about uh, integration with GPS, NAVCOM, or just GPSs, so you pre you guys pretty much integrate with everything, right? The Avidyne, the IFD series, the 445, 450, uh, KSN 770? Yeah. Yeah, just about anything you'd run into uh, in today's GA fleet we work with. Excellent. Well, it, uh, I'll tell you, I'm, you know, it, 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 I wish that when I first did it, I had this upgrade path available, but I went straight to the top. I'm really happy with, I, with what I've got right now, and I'm excited for that max upgrade. So I just want to thank uh, both of you for uh, tonight's presentation. It's, it's really uh, uh, exciting to see new products coming out, especially when they're as economical as this. Uh, it you know like, as I said in the beginning you know we keep our aircraft for a long time and it is great to think about our avionics staying with us for just as long and to also just be so open to being able to integrate with whatever go else goes in our panel and so thanks again Scott and thank you Mike for joining us and again uh, I'll flip to the next slide here. Um, uh, feel free if for any other questions to get your information directly from Aspen go to aspenavionics.com forward slash contact. And again, this has been a presentation from Social Flight. Feel free to sign up from Social Flight. You'll be able to get uh, access and notifications for future webinars like this. We have lots more information and other events we'll be having with Aspen. And so again, thank you so much for joining us and taking the time to watch this webinar. Thank <laughs> you.